Hey there guys, hope everybody's doing well. I'm gonna cut straight to the point here. I think Andy Pence has lost his mind and videos like the one he just made are a total detriment to anyone who's actually trying to expose these underlying issues within the gaming and entertainment industries to more people. This topic is something that I aim to go deeper in on another specific video, but just for the sake of context here, I think that the best tool that we've got to call out these things is our common sense. If we lose our common sense and we just start calling everything gay, woke and especially when it doesn't even make any sense, like in this video from Andy, then we're never really going to get anywhere because the way to end e radical extreme thought and policies and all this garbage infecting our media is with reason and moderation, not with more radical extremist bullshit. And of course, we can all get heated, we can all get mad at some things, we can all rant about them, we can all use crude language, we can all roast terrible media and not hold back our genuine emotions towards these matters. I'm no stranger to that either, but this here, this is just bad. We can do all of those things, but at the very least, we should have solid arguments that are actually based in facts and can be understood, or at the very least not make us look like idiots. Initially I was going to go through this video point by point, but then I realized that just a few days ago Andy Pence tried to claim an entire interview that he himself set up with Actman, and the Actman was actually in the interview itself, so I'm not gonna take my chances here by playing clips of his video. Instead, I will use screenshots from his video and point out what he's saying for context while responding. But I warn you right now, this is going to be a little bit scattered because this dude, he is making no fucking sense at all. His arguments are so bad in this video that keeping them together is a challenge in and of itself. To take each point apart piece by piece even feels pointless because he's going off of a narrative that he pulled from his ass. So for example, he starts showing off these four games here and calling them gay and r and asking Xbox if they are the games that he's expected to play. And it's just like, obviously fucking not? Does he seriously think that Xbox is putting these games on the Game Pass with him in mind? Does he think the entirety of the Game Pass is meant for a single demographic? Does he really think that the devs that made these games are making them for the same demographic that Andy is in? Like, I don't even know what's going on in his head. It's just delusional. In the same category that these games are in, which is the recently added tab on the Xbox, there are other games that he could pick, like for example Sifu, Atlas Fallen, Mafia and Doom. Or he could just browse another category and play Crisis, Gears of War, Call of Duty or Dead Space. It's up to him to choose. His narrative sounds like Xbox is trying to replace their action catalog with baby games or forcing them into his personal recommended list. Then he puts this shit up and wonders who's playing these games and it's just like, have you heard of kids? Short little dudes running around, usually screeching in grocery stores? You're looking at games made for a clearly young demographic and you're pretending like they are the brand new lineup of games made with our demographic in mind. Then he moves on to the only good point that he has here, and that he could have actually explored properly instead of just diminishing everything down to HA! <laughs> which just defeats the entire purpose of his point, before even starting to lay it out. It misrepresents it and makes it completely futile. There is a shift in the quote-unquote masculinity present in games today. But this isn't some simple matter like a button that got switched off, and it isn't something that we can just attribute the blame to one single thing, nor is it even applicable to these four games that he showed. We must remember that the games industry has grown exponentially over the last two decades, there are much more gamers nowadays than there were back then, and gaming has expanded to include pretty much all kinds of different people from different places and different ages. So in other words, we have many more games in many more genres for many more people. This naturally dilutes the perception of these things, and that's relevant. As is relevant to call out this bullshit on screen, I mean, that Katamari game isn't even a 2024 release, it came out last year. Trials of Mana is a remake from a 1995 game. He calls this childish and gay, and it's like, okay? Can you define what you mean then? Can you actually define it beyond some I don't know what to tell you guys, this just looks childlike and gay. Is everything anime style childish and gay? Is Final Fantasy VII one of the most compelling stories I've ever played? And not even back then, by the way, this isn't even a nostalgia based take. I played this game for the first time in 2020 or 2019. 
Is it childish and gay because it has those older visuals and that art style? Am I supposed to be gay and retarded if I enjoy JRPGs? We are simultaneously praising the Japanese games industry right now for not buying into this DEI bullshit, but at the same time we're cucks if we play these games? This is just stupid argumentation, make up your mind, or better yet, stop talking about these matters altogether. Because if you happen to be a fan of Andy and you're learning these terrible takes from him and you're using these arguments when approaching this topic of masculinity in games or the issues with other ideological bullshit finding its way into our games like DEI, intersectionality, etc. That is only going to turn people away from you and especially turn people away from every single thing that you've got to say while further muddying the waters of our collective fight. But more on that in a second. Also, he could have just as easily placed Shadow of the Earth Tree on this list, as well as Stellar Blade, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, Like a Dragon, Infinite Wealth, Rise of the Ronin, Dragon's Dogma 2, Space Marines 2, or Black Myth Wukong, just to name a few. Which plays very nicely in his next argument, in which he states that there was an accusation in his previous video that he was handpicking masculine games and comparing them to feminine games on purpose. I didn't watch his other video and I don't even care to do so because this is precisely what he literally just did in this video. He grabs some of the best games of 2004 and he compares it to some of the worst shit of 2024. He's picking games that are representative of the best of 2004 while picking trash that isn't even representative of 2024. Hell, some of these aren't even 2024 games to begin with. I'm surprised he didn't use Concord as well, to be honest. Don't get me wrong. Games like Star Wars Outlaws and Assassin's Creed Shadows, if developed back then, would have definitely gone hard. I can already imagine a very gritty third-person shooter in the place of Star Wars Outlaws, where we would have definitely been able to play as a dude or had a character creator like in the Jedi Academy games. We would have likely have gotten a lot more action and a lot more adventure without big wide open spaces with nothing to fucking do and the little fucking rat companion following us around just so that Disney can sell more toys. According to Legendary Drops video where he spoke to Ubisoft developers, the potential of Star Wars Outlaws was heavily limited in part by Disney's own directives and not wanting a game where the violence goes too far and the protagonist that would quote unquote punch down. So basically in other words, they don't want a game that is fun, they don't want a game that could be something along the lines of a Star Wars GTA or a Star Wars Red Dead Redemption, which is precisely the type of uh, advertising that they did for this game. I mean, obviously Obviously they didn't call it that, but the gaming journalists did. However, it was up to Ubisoft's responsibility to be able to make sure that these rules still make a good game. For example, I'm sure that Respawn had to deal with the exact same type of rules in the making of their Jedi games. And they did a great job with both Jedi Fallen Order and Jedi Survivor which ended up great games despite these restrictions because Respawn took another route. They made their protagonist an actual youthful Jedi. Cal Kestis is very Luke Skywalker-like, in that he's this very positive and very hopeful personality who believes in good and justice. And then they built the structure of their game around this Metroidvania style of action game that lets you explore very well-designed levels with an addicting gameplay loop focused on combat, platforming and puzzle solving, with an emphasis on the combat system. The bigger problem of these restrictive Disney rules that apply to these two games is how weak the lightsabers ended up feeling. For game balance's sake, it's obvious that we couldn't just have a lightsaber cut through everything in one shot. However, when we strike down human enemies in the form of stormtroopers, death troopers, bounty hunters, sith assholes, etc., we should be able to have kill animations that split them in half or lob their heads off. Sadly, you can only split animals and creatures in half, where humans are limited to just having an arm or a leg cut off. For as long as Disney holds on to the Star Wars property, we are never going to see gritty realistic lightsaber combat outside of installing mods. But anyway, let's get back to Andy and his shitty list of 2024 games. So, Assassin's Creed Shadows, which was pushed to 2025, would have probably been much grittier too, though the game isn't really out yet, so I can't judge it yet. If we go by Valhalla as an example, the game was actually pretty bloody. There are all kinds of violent kill animations in combat. We got heads and arms being lobbed off, 
we got heads being crushed, we got fucking arms flying, so the problem really isn't there. I'd say the problem is in the choice of making the protagonist black. I'm still following this story and looking for confirmations on a rumor that originally Assassin's Creed Shadows apparently was meant to have a Japanese man as a samurai rather than Yasuke and that it changed afterwards. If this is true, then yeah, I don't see companies in 2004 purposefully changing their character designs to appeal to DEI initiatives. As for Ghost of Yotai, I already made a video on it, on what I think, and a follow-up that goes into it and other Sony-related games. I think you can 100% have a game with a female lead that is still packed with action, brutal combat and blood. If Yotai ends up being bad, it's not going to be because of the concept of having a female protagonist, it's going to be because of handing too much control of their games to consultants like Sweet Baby Inc, who exist to do nothing but fuck with our media. For more information you can check out these videos, I'll link them in the description, I talk about the fact that the actress is an activist and why that's bad, I talk about the fact that people expected Jin in the sequel, in the Sony video I go over this overall loss of passion and desire to please gamers from Sony, who built an entire generation of great games in the last decade, only to now bait in switches with sequels featuring other characters for seemingly no good reason. Now that we established how we handpicked goaded games from 2004 that look good and shitty or demographically irrelevant games from 2024 to look bad, let's have a look at how he literally does it again. Hey guys, I am picking 4 goaded games from October 2004 and 4 random fucking games that Phil Spencer put on my Game Pass, neither of which released in October and all of which are completely incomparable to one another in terms of the demographics they are aiming to reach, the genres they are in and pretty much everything else that you could even try to extract out of them. Thanks for watching. For more gaming news, reviews and discussions, stay tuned right here on N pants. I'll see you guys next time. Andy out. Like, bro, what the fuck are you doing with this? You're trying to prove to your audience that you're not being bad faith by handpicking examples that are essentially incomparable, but you're doing it by handpicking examples that are incomparable. If you're just having a laugh, having some fun, making a bit of a joke troll video, that's fine, but present it that way, instead of presenting it like you're actually trying to prove a point here with these dog shit arguments and examples. The least you could do is go looking for actual October games to compare these to, because your argument that these are games that Xbox clearly expects us to play is just so garbage, man. The Game Pass has hundreds of games in a bunch of different categories. You pick whatever the fuck you want to play, and other people with kids or little cousins or nephews or who simply like to try out smaller stuff like this to relax with picks these games. Why am I even explaining this? Let's just move on. October this year is looking real dry. With Assassin's Creed Shadows being pushed the next year, the main events of October are basically Call of Duty Black Ops 6, Dragon Ball Sparking Zero, though since it's an anime styled game, I don't know if it's too gay for Andy, Silent Hill 2 Remake and potentially Diablo 4's expansion. Usually Octobers are a lot stronger than this, there's a reason why they've always been called Broketober for years. Last year, for example, we saw the release of Assassin's Creed Mirage, Lords of the Fallen, Alan Wake 2, Ghost Runner 2, Forza Motorsport and Spider-Man 2, among a lot of other stuff. While these games are not as quote-unquote masculine and edgy as Red Dead Revolver, GTA San Andreas, Halo 2 and Fight for New York, they are regardless a fucking far cry from the four games that Andy handpicked. And see, this is why I have an issue with going point for point with Andy's videos. What I really wanted to segue into was talk about how there has been a very big attitude shift over the years in Western society in the content that we create. Which is what Andy should be doing in his video, but instead this is what he puts up. And I have to put away what's actually important in this topic and just call out the constant barrage of nonsense and cringe. Again, no Andy, that's not the fucking games that Xbox gave you in 2004 and that's not the games that Xbox gave you in 2024. In 2004, those are the games that Rockstar, Bungie and EA made, one of which is published by Xbox, yes, and that you liked and bought. And in 2024, those are some of the games that Game Pass added to their platform, next to, again, I repeat, Sifu, Atlas Fallen, Mafia and Doom, and next to a shit ton of other games in other categories, of which Halo 2 is also part of, via the Master Chief Collection. 
You're just choosing to hone in on these kitty games out of your own volition, as if Phil Spencer was sitting you down on his lap and force-feeding you with this kind of content while telling you not to play all the other shit that you're actually interested in. And since we're here, here are some other games from 2004 that you could have chosen to put in your list, but you ignored, because they weren't up your alley, they weren't what you were looking for. So why are you honing in on these four games right now, when you have so many others that you could choose? You say you're highlighting a difference, the only thing you're highlighting here is your ignorance, bad faith argumentation and inability to tackle the actual point. Or points, rather, because there's actually two that matter. One is the fact that back then games were actually so much easier and faster to make and this counts a lot because no way in hell that we can actually have a year nowadays with two Rockstar game releases. Nowadays we're lucky if we get two Rockstar games within the same decade. And the other is the thing that I was going to say before Andy rudely interrupted me with that terrible comparison, which is that culture absolutely has changed. It is true that we did used to have way more edginess and attitude and entertainment back in the 90s and early 2000s. I talk about this a little bit on my video on Black Myth Wukong. Basically, our culture has changed a lot, but that change has started far before these modern times that we are living through right now, and far detached from the direct blame that Andy places on supposed LGBT Satanists without even delineating the normal people from the extremists, which is just disgusting, low IQ, rage bait bullshit. One of the things that people on our side get attacked with while arguing against these DEI initiatives, the exaggeration of political correctness and cancel culture, is that we are generalized into bigots and whatever aphobes simply because of disliking a terrible show or a movie or a game that is using diversity and inclusion as a shield against criticism. How are we any better as people if we just generalize an entire bunch of other people as some satanic gobbledygook and as the main source of our problems when there's people within that very community that do not like and do not agree with the far-left extremism going on in media, education, politics and just society in general. There is a lot of infighting within the LGBT community itself because there are those who are extremists and there are those who are normal. Let's talk about this attitude shift a little bit. Certain shows and attitudes started changing a long time ago already. Even around this time, there were people shying away from shows such as Jackass or The Chappelle Show because of the crude, inappropriate nature of them. I thought they were fucking brilliant and precisely what our society needed more of. We needed more media that makes us uncomfortable so that we can get used to three things. To the fact that there is no reason for us to be uncomfortable or offended to begin with. To the fact that if we are uncomfortable and offended, the world does not revolve around us and we have no right to take away these pieces of media from those who actually like it. And the reality that there are many around us who do like it because different people have different tastes, different sensibilities and different proclivities. But none of these things mean that they should be treated as less than other people. By overly controlling the content that we made, we also control the narrative and the perception around these things by considering the overly political correct content as the only appropriate content, we indirectly established that all other content was wrong in some way, and it made us wrong for liking it. And then the snowball just keeps going. If it's wrong for people to like it, then it's wrong for sponsors and advertisers to support it. And if it's wrong for sponsors and advertisers to support it, then television channels are wrong for airing it, and have no money to sustain it and it just keeps going and going. For example, The Office, a super safe sitcom, is considered a show that could not be made today, simply because it treats matters like race, sex and sexuality with humor. There's even a specific episode making fun of DEI initiatives in the workplace. This is the sort of stuff that gets certain people on Twitter clutching their butt plugs as they grind their teeth at how inappropriate it is to make fun of such supposedly sensitive topics. Video games were often in trouble in regards to this oversensitivity as well. Not a year went by where a new GTA release didn't get attacked by the media and politicians for being too violent, to the point of even blaming these games for violent crimes in real life. And a lot of them were actually conservatives too, which just goes to show you that this quote-unquote pussification of content wasn't always just a far-left thing, targeting people who just wanted to have fun and be creatively free. 
Right now, in the entertainment spaces of film, shows and games, it absolutely is. I'm not making excuses or trying to bullshit anyone. Currently, it is people on the left side of the aisle pushing for insane political correctness, DEI initiatives, DEI consultant companies like Sweet Baby Inc. who are overflowing with unhinged gender and race and sex obsessed activists who hate our medium and who have this weird, intense disdain for men and masculinity across several types of media. I recommend people check out the Despot of Antrim's videos, by the way. He covers these movies and shows with excruciating detail, humor and objectivity. And you can definitely notice the way that these far-left ideologies slowly crept into TV shows and movies and are now trying to creep into games. And the sad thing is that channels like this, that basically take a topic like this and just shit all over it with b****ed arguments that barely even merit a reply, and who just call everything gay and woke, are not doing anything to help the situation. Videos like these aren't exposing anything, they're not attempting to explain things to their audiences, they don't try to educate people on what is going on and give them proper ammo to use online whenever they come across a comment section filled with people from the quote-unquote other side, trying to misrepresent our arguments or calling everyone who dislikes a show like The Acolyte or a game like Star Wars Outlaws a right-leaning bigot or a ist or a phobe or all of these other pointless meaningless words that they come up with. Videos like these only help the other side by giving them ammo to misrepresent and paint us all as unhinged losers who lose our composure whenever we see a gay character or a female protagonist or just about anything that isn't a white male, as well as, apparently, games like these, which are just games that are simply aimed at entirely different demographics. They basically make false claims like this right here, from the same journalist who attacked Black Myth Wukong, sound like actual truths. Because what we have here are random games in their own little corners, in their own little genres, appealing to their own little demographics, and not trying to intrude on our general games. These are games that are not the next Dooms, or the next Gods of War, or the next GTAs, they are just whatever the fuck they are. I literally already forgot their names, and in a week, I will forget what they even look like. And the fact is that if Andy hadn't made a video on them, we wouldn't even know of their existence. I don't take issue with any game that exists in their own little space, with their own little IPs. Obviously there are exceptions. A game like Dustborn, for example, is so fucking overtly provocative that it deserves all the roasts that it can get. And the same goes for trash like Concord. And this is because when something is bad, and I mean not something that we don't just like because it's not our thing, I'm talking about objectively bad. Really really bad content that is ideologically driven and trying to send a fucking negative message within our industry, then we should be vocal about it so that these companies know what it is that we want and what it is that we don't want. But these games here are just games for kids. In Andy's video, he tells his viewers to stop buying and playing games like these and instead buy masculine games. Respectfully, I gotta ask myself, did you really fucking expect your audience to ever buy a game like that in the first place? What are you, fucking stupid? What are you doing to yourself here, dude? These are games that never would have been on their radar. They would see that shit while browsing the games on Game Pass catalog and their eyes wouldn't even lock into them, because their art style is obviously signaling that these are not high-octane action or racing titles. And this is what I mean when I talk about letting games like this exist in their own space, because they're not doing anything wrong. Anytime you want to call out a company like PlayStation or Xbox for working with DEI consultants to deliberately change their games into being written with more cringe than a TikTok video, or making real-life mythological figures black for no reason other than filling quotas, or whatever the fuck this entire character was, or call out Dragon Age Veilguard for changing their art direction into this overly saturated, lively colored, cartoony textured shit instead of the original more gritty and dark fantasy approach that we wanted, that is fine, and I'll be right there in agreement. Because it's like a deliberate change in pre-established franchises or pre-established genres of games that have always skewed more towards a male demographic, getting changed to appeal to younger ages or different demographics altogether just because of 
Hashtag man bad. If this was the stuff that Andy wanted to call out, then I would agree with him, but instead he's just going off on tangents, calling everything that isn't overtly masculine and action-packed as gay and woke, totally ignoring important factors, such as the fact that this industry has grown a lot. It now appeals to loads of different people, of loads of different ages. There's people out there who spend hours playing nothing but simulator games, cozy games, farming games, etc. Are they all gay now? Shit, am I gay too? Because I love unwinding to house flipper sometimes. Renovate a house, paint it, decorate it. You even polish wood while restoring old antiques. I mean, shit, I, this is it. You got me, guys. I guess I'm gay now. All these different kinds of games not only have their right to exist, but are often actually very successful. And every time he attacks stuff like this with utterly baseless arguments, he makes us all look like man-children crying about other people playing with their own toys that they brought from home. He's acting like an SJW throwing a tantrum because there's games out there that aren't personally catering to him, just like the SJWs who throw fits because of the latest masculine video game isn't personally pandering and representing their identity. He even puts them all side by side and starts comparing the art styles, and going on about how much better 2004 is, how much more masculine and badass and cool they are. How about you compare art styles between games that are actually e equivalent? I, I, we keep going back to the same point here. Why aren't you comparing these to equivalent genres or at the very least equivalent age ratings? Why don't you compare it to Red Dead Redemption 2's cover art? Or GTA 5's? And for Halo, why don't you compare it to Infinite? or maybe to Doom Eternal. And for the fighting game, why don't you compare it to a fighting game? I, what the fuck are these arguments? This dude is cooked. And then he ends the video by moaning about how people are trying to take him out, with people downvoting his videos and talking shit about him, and that anyone that we see complaining about him and calling him a grifter are just communist bots. And hey dude, I can somewhat sympathize. Okay? I started making videos very recently, I sometimes get very annoying and abrasive comments too. Probably not as bad as yours though, since I'm not coming across as an unhinged maniac calling everything woke and gay. But I do understand that far-left ideologues love their cancel culture bullshit. We need look no further than the recent coordinated attack from several big content creators trying to get YouTube to shut down or demonetize channels such as Nerdrotic, Ryan Kinnell, Geeks and Gamers, Heels, Babyface and Star Wars Theory. But have you ever considered that maybe, just maybe, people are giving you shit because of your own terrible takes, because of your own flawed and malicious argumentation, because of your own targeting of your own audience with ridiculous shit like anime being gay, and people who play these different kinds of games being rammed by their boyfriends? Have you also considered that a lot of this distaste for you has only increased after your debate with the act man went to shit, and then on top of that you tried to false flag his video just to try to hide it. Have you considered the fact that your actions have their own consequences, and all it takes is for someone in your audience, or someone who is new to all of this and is just only now quote unquote waking up and being exposed to all of this stuff for the first time, to simply be a gamer with a more expensive taste in games, you know, someone who doesn't just play shooters or racers or whatever, but also likes unwinding after a long day at the steel mill, as you put it, to something more relaxing in between sessions of mainstream action games. Or something more narrative driven, or maybe even JRPGs which are extremely popular. All it takes is them hearing you say this nonsense and they're immediately put off by you, and put off by the message and the good fight that other people are actually trying to carry out on this platform, calling everything gay and woke and using the worst possible examples to try and justify it isn't just ignorant, it's also turning you into a lol cow. But hey, that's really none of my concern. What you do with your channel is your business, but don't act surprised when people dislike your videos, call you out in comments, own you in debates, or do video responses like this. Right now, you are being your own biggest enemy, dude. But anyway, as far as everyone else goes, I want to thank all of my body type A's and body type B's as well for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, please leave a like for the algorithm gods and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet. Always remember to stay away from house flipper and have a good rest of your day. See you on the next one.